This is one of the glories of Cornell, and I, I'm not talking about Cayuga Lake, although it's a beautiful view here, from the fifth floor of the Johnson Art Museum, which has a very strong Asian art collection. And one of the advantages of the recent addition of a new wing to this building is they were able to reclaim about half again as much of the space for galleries for Asian art as they had before. Um, because they were able to move offices and the library and storage to the new wing. So they can put the non-light sensitive works here opposite this glorious picture window and the light sensitive works, the scrolls and so on, inside where they didn't have space before. They now have interior space for such works. I'm here now with the new director of the Johnson Museum. Uh, this is Stephanie Wiles. You've been here for eight months. That's great. <laughs> and Ellen Averill, who is the chief curator and curator of Asian art at the Johnson Museum. It's something that Stephanie told me she's particularly fond of. It's, it's a recent acquisition. I just saw a family with children. The children were fascinated by it and asking the mother, what is this and can we take a picture of it? So what is it that's so appealing about this? Unfortunately, my video is not going to do it justice. Uh, but what is it about this that particularly appeals to you? Um, for me, it's the visual quality of it. Um, and the, you know, I've never seen anything quite like it, but it's Ellen who really <laughs> can explain to you more details about it. So what are we looking at here? So this is this is a contemporary work. This is by Puran Jean Chi, mm -hmm. who is an uh, Iranian-born artist. She now lives and works in New York City. And um, she was trained as in traditional calligraphy practice. And of course, you know, calligraphy in the Islamic world is, you know, considered the highest art form. So she's, in, in this series of scrolls, she's writing the Quran text, but she's doing it in a different way than it was done traditionally. How so? T typically, um, the Quran text would be written using the consonants and without the vowels, and the vowel sounds would be indicated by diacritical marks. Okay. Um, so what she's done is she's left out the consonants and only written the diacritical marks. <laughs> so it's it's still the true Quran text, which of course it's very important not to deviate from as yeah. as, as a calligrapher, you know, writing the text. Yes. Um, but she's she's decided to you know to leave out the cons consonants and show the diacritical marks. So these are the diacritical marks here. These small. Uh, things and then these are numbers and these indicate uh -huh. the verse the verse numbers. Okay, I was wondering about and that. And then and then the only place where we see consonants is at a chapter heading, which and you see you see that up here. The advantages of the Chinese and the Asian art installations uh, in the new improved Johnson Museum is they can put works from the same culture together instead of having to install by media in order to keep the works on paper and the other light sensitive works out of the way of those picture windows. So now we have a whole Tibetan art area here uh, where light sensitive works and works that are not so light sensitive <laughs> can all uh, be shown together from the same culture. Again, we can have Chinese scrolls, Chinese ceramics, all together in the same room in which, again, light sensitive works can be in a controlled environment, but put together with objects that don't necessarily need that controlled environment, but that belong from the same culture. And another thing that reclaiming space has allowed them to do in the old building is to have a whole open storage area. It's beautifully installed, no labels, however. Uh, you can download an iPhone app, which you can do, this kind of walks you through how to get the iPhone apps, and then you can find out quite a bit about each object. Uh, I think, I, oh, and they, and they offer you, if you don't have one, which I happen to have, <laughs> they offer you one to use in the gallery so you can find out what everything is that intrigues you. Thank you. We're headed to the new wing, designed by, uh, by the IMP firm, but uh, 
uh, Mr. John Sullivan from the firm was the lead architect back when the original Johnson Museum was built and again for this edition which has just opened. Uh, as you can see the same kind of concrete walls, the same types of materials and a glorious new lobby for this second part of the museum which has galleries and auditorium and offices and a lovely little garden outside. Here a level above where we just were is the main lobby of the new wing and a, a Richard Long sculpture which wasn't really planned for this space but, but kind of works beautifully as if it were made for it. <laughs> this is a site specific. Andy Warhol over there and uh, a view of the old building. As you can see, it's uh, right there below ground is where they connect, where we were just a moment ago. And storage, there's a lot of storage below, which I got a chance to see, state-of-the-art new cases and racks and so on.